Now, to show you the new WJBP2 twin channel preamp, which is stunning. It's faster than replacing every preamp in the studio for bass. Uh, the likes of Marcus Miller has it, which I'm proud to say. And I happened to be in the studio with him and Andre Berry while he was showing us his new recording using this. Stunning. Anyway, this is a twin channel preamp. It has the same front end as the new 2000 watt amp. Uh, but I'll go through it and show you again. So you can take it anywhere. Uh, Andre Berry does. He puts it in a, in a case and takes it on tour with him. So that means he always has his tone, no matter what he has to play in, if he can't get my rigs for backline. Um, it's set to be immaculately accurate, flat. So again, everything starts with the source. And look at the source I've got here. It's just, they built this for me. So I'll flatten this out on both channels. I've only got slight tweaks on there for when I do use it. I'll show you how to use it. First, you have to maximize your source. So bass full on. Get your tone here. Just a little bit of bass. Middle off my D string I use. Flat. Uh, for slap on the G. Flat. And I'm um, got just a little bit towards the back pickup with the tone, just a tad that gives you a little bit more punch. So now I can go here. Most people don't do anything, it just reproduces it. That's the DI you're hearing when I play and the mic and there's a mic in front there. So you're getting exactly what I'm playing here on the recording you're listening to. Now flat, if I go up the frequency range you'll hear so on. Uh, it's even and that's what we want as bass players. You want to play down there and play up here and have even notes as opposed to some things that drop out there or there's stacks of mud in between. This is so clear. It's pristinely beautiful. Harmonics. <laughs> you, don't, you don't hear things like that. You'll hear things you've never heard before in here. I had a luthier in Sydney say that I didn't know I had a buzz in one of my guitars until I plugged it into your amp. It will reproduce everything. Um, the amp itself frequency wise is 2020 in kilohertz, but I've set these at different attack points of what we need, this EQ. So the bass, the bass is set to the attack point of the E string. That's that punch kick drum area of your E string with just enough bass to give you a nice warm round sound. So. Let's see, do I need any more? Not really, I've added just a tad. The low mids set off the A string. It bites and growls flat. The mids are off the D string. They're there if I want them. Flat and so on with the treble etc and the high treble uh, for slap playing i might back off a mid the mid just a tad <laughs> minuscule now that's how the eq is set the input gain you must maximize um, i'll turn it off and now uh, i'll mute it here That's the input gain on channel two. That's the input gain on channel one. I've got a pad in on channel one because this is an active bass. If I release the pad, if you're using a passive bass, uh, you have to set that accordingly. Um, channel two, again, this is an, uh, a progression from the first single channel preamp I made, the WJBP where Andre Berry from David Sanborn and Scott Colley wanted two things. Andre wanted more top end, that glass, than what came out of the, the first single channel preamp. So I changed the last treble frequency and added one more. 
he's over the moon about it. He takes it in sessions and uses it, same as Marcus. And Scott wanted to phantom power his mic on the upright so he could blend the, fan the microphone with the bridge pickup. So I added phantom power um, to this. You can use it or not use it. So the gain on channel two is set for a microphone. So if you're using two electric basses, you might like to ink. See how that gain is way up on channel two? There, just to, I'll just put myself back in. Just to, I don't need a delay. Just to, um, to equal channel one. That's because it's a mic gain, but it's all right. You just turn it up for electric bass. Now, you see there's a pan control on both of these channels. Um, this is a stereo preamp. It has stereo out, and you could actually use stereo in if you had a stereo bass and get true stereo. The pan control um, will pan from left to right out. Now, I'm using two of the WJ powered 210 cabinets with this preamp because it needs a powered cab for it to be driven. Um, so I can pan to one cabinet or the other. I can use one cabinet or I can use two cabinets. Depends how much you want. Um, so that's exactly the same for both channels. Um, over here, channel A and, cha and the master act as a blend. You should run channel A full on and use the master for your volume uh, and then blend the amount of channel A into the ma The master operates channel two and the master of everything. So you blend channel A into channel two mm -hmm. if you're using both. Otherwise you run channel A full on and this is your master switch there. Um, there is a 30 hertz boost on there if you want it. No one ever uses it, but um, if you want it, If you want it, it's there. There's also compression on there. It's optical compression. I'll engage the compression. It's savage. But you might like it. So that's up to you totally. Now the rear of the WJBP2 preamp. Its features, of course, is an on and off switch. It's an external power pack for the reason that it minimizes noise than having it internally, which is great for live, you don't hear anything, and great for the studio. Its outputs are left and right balanced XLR outs or left and right quarter inch mono, unbalanced. I recommend using the balanced as they're a stronger signal and a better signal. This is an effects send and return loop, which you can add your effects mono or stereo in there. And next to it is the DI ground lift switch, pre or post switch. There's the DI, and it has a DI level. Unity gain on the level is all the way off. If your front of house engineer, live or studio says, can you give me a bit more, when well, you can utilize that level. The foot switch, which is here, is a kill switch. So if you want to tune on stage and not have your sound coming through front of house, or in the studio, you just hit that switch and release it when you're done. Over to the other end of it, there's a um, stereo headphone out with a headphone out with a level, and a stereo auxiliary input, either mini jack or quarter inch. So you can plug your iPhone, iPad, backing tracks, even if you want to play along with backing tracks, or even do a live gig, or even plug something auxiliary in the back. It won't have any EQ on it. Maybe you've got a keyboard you want to play in there and play keyboard bass. So that's the WJPP2.